Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gagnon, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hello, everybody. Hello, welcome. It's a Wednesday here on the uh, on the Ramble. I'm Alex Bennett, your obedient host, and I will be here until uh, midnight Eastern Daylight Time. And a little bit later, we'll be checking in with our citizens panel. But right now, we're checking in with an old wife or a former one but you'll see what i mean wait a minute what do we have here what is that what are you going to a british wedding what is this no i'm only going to lunch you're going to lunch and you wear that to lunch after you and i are done i'm going to lunch but there's a reason i'm wearing a hat that i normally wouldn't is i think you knew or we'd mentioned that for the past month and a half or so I've been going once a week to have liquid iron infusions for my anemia. Mm -hmm. And I had the last one last week and I mentioned to the nurse uh, while I was there, I said, you know, I haven't had chemo since January, but I have a sense I'm losing more hair, which I had lost, I have very thin hair, but it wasn't like going bald, but it was, I was losing hair. And it seemed to have been coming out the last couple of weeks. And she said, of course that happens with iron infusions. Well, nobody told me. Ah, you thought it was the chemo. Well, it couldn't be because it stopped in January, so I wondered why my hair was falling out. And um, apparently it's not only chemo that does this to you. And so one of the things you learn from pancreatic cancer is that things like going bald are not very important in life, and you don't really care if you've got bald spots. And I was toying with the idea if it got worse that I would become one of the first women to say it's okay to be partially bald and walk around that way. Um, but, you know, when you get better and you're not so sick anymore, you get over that and you would like to have some hair. By the way, <laughs> I have not mentioned this is my, uh, for better term, lack of a better way of describing her, my ex-wife, Ronnie Bennett. Yes. It is not just a curiosity that the two of us use the same last name, and, but hers is legal, mine isn't. Well, you know, by now everybody knows that you're both of those things, Bennett and Schwartzman. Well, you know something? You did something. People always said to me, well, how, how do your uh, your wives refer to you? Well, to begin with, my current wife knows me as Alex Bennett, and that's basically it. You know, she didn't. She stayed with her name because she didn't want that last name, Schwartzman. Okay. I understand. I, do you know how many times in my life I had to say, Schwartzman, no T and two N's? I, yeah. And nobody gets yeah. it when you say that. But uh, 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 what was I going to say? I was I was going in a direction here. How do we have the name Bennett? Oh, oh well, no, we know that how that happened. That was part yes. of the divorce settlement that you could use the name Bennett. You know, and right. then you you legally adopted it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but that, do you want to know why? Why? Because when we broke up, mm. I kind of lost my job. I couldn't very well show up for work the next day yeah. producing your show. So I had to go look for work. And everybody in the radio business and TV business in New York City knew me as Ronnie Bennett. So that if I called up and said, hey, this is Ronnie Schwartzman, they wouldn't know who I was. Right. So I had to use it that way to call and start looking for work. Right. And then, you know, how was that? What, do I go back to my maiden name? What do I do? So I kept Bennett. Yeah. And that and and that it has been ever since. Yes. Uh, but uh, no, there was some there's some direction I was going, and I, I can't remember what it is now. There's something about your wives and your last names. My wives and my last names. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. She didn't want to take Schwarzman. Okay, so she kept it. Kept her name, and my problem was now there was some fun, something had to do with Schwarzman. It had to do with my real name, and I can't remember it now. Ben. And Alex. The, oh, oh, yes, yes. Okay. Now I remember. See, I went to a doctor. As I mentioned this to Will Durst uh, yesterday. Uh, that I went to a doctor yesterday for my, uh, for the numbness of my feet. And so he asked me some questions to see how 
lucid I was, and he asked me my name, where I lived, you know, my how old am I, blah, 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 all of that. And then he says, who's the governor of New York? And I froze. I couldn't remember the name of the governor of New York. <laughs> and then he said, well, I'll make it easier. Who, who's the mayor of New York City? And I couldn't remember. I was, and it, it bothered me all day. And then I suddenly realized I don't give a shit about local politics. So I never watch <laughs> any of that stuff. So I don't hear Cuomo constantly in my ear or de Blasio constantly in my ear. Uh, but not being able to remember that is kind of the same as not being able to remember other things. So when you ask that question, when we started going into this, now I can't remember where I went. See? See? Yeah, that's what happens to us old folks. But I can remember well, about the hat yeah, well, because I no longer want to show off my bald spot. I have a large Okay, but wait a minute. I'm still hats. trying to go with that Schwarzman thing. Oh, well, well I'm going with the hat thing. And then she couldn't, she couldn't, she didn't want the name. Uh, it was uh, too long a name. Uh, I can't remember where I was going with that. Uh, so uh, that's what, what happens when you have numb feet. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, I switched from calling you Ben to calling oh, you Oh, that's Al. it. That was it. We're back to where it was. Now, don't... Don't, <laughs> don't confuse don't, don't, <laughs> here, These are two old people having an adult-pated moment. Uh, 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 I know what no, I'm saying. I always pointed out to you that what you would do is in company you would refer to me as bennett so I there did? yes you came up with the idea because when you said bennett most people thought you were affectionately calling me by my last name but for those in the room who knew me by my first name they would think you were calling me by my first name i did that mm -hmm. i thought that up yeah. I don't remember that. It was, I remember it <laughs> I, I i always tell that story except now when i couldn't remember it well, you know, that's how it goes. So anyway, I'm hiding my bald spot again yeah. because, um, you know, I'm feeling better, a lot better. I feel really good. And I wish I had more hair and I don't want to show off my bald spot. I wish I didn't care about my bald spot, could, which when could, I was still really sick, since I we, didn't care. Since we have <laughs> video here, would you like to show it to us? Show what? The bald spot. No. Oh, okay. All right. No. You know, you're the one who goes, is get older, get used to it, be embrace I, it, you I, know. I didn't and say I, figured, I am without and, and, and I'm the first one to say embrace your baldness. <laughs> well, you know, I do have my contradictions. I wish it were different. Yeah, yeah. But I do have that. Well, my wife's hair is thinning out a bit, you know, and she's not taking iron. You know, I seem to know a lot of women friends that have a lot of hair. Really oh, irritates really? me. <laughs> Well, I mean, she has a lot of hair, but it is thinning, and your hair does get thin. You know, oh, the you hair, get individual hairs get yeah. thinner too, yeah. and you know, and my hair had been thinning without chemo and without iron. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but I got to read you something very funny. Yeah, I wrote about, um, you know, I, I wrote about the iron on my blog, the iron infusions, and I have the most wonderful readers who leave comments. Yeah. One of them, whose name I can't remember, I got to read this to you. Uh, left a comment about the iron infusions. Uh, she said, on the plus side of your week-long iron infusions, you can now take all your refrigerator magnets and stick them on yourself. <laughs> 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 Thereby freeing up the fridge for that ever-present and so important to-do list. <laughs> so I could put them all over me. <laughs> oh, boy. Pretty funny, pretty yeah. funny. Um, there, there's some good news. What's the good news? Uh, did I tell you about this lump I have over here? Oh, yeah, you told me about that lump, and I read on your <coughs> blog about it, but go ahead and tell them. Yes, and so, you know, it's been there for more than a decade, just sitting there doing nothing, and yeah. then suddenly it gets bigger at the end of the day now. So a week ago, I had a biopsy. They stick needles in there and take yeah. out cells, and I had to wait until Friday, and it came back benign. So... <sighs> Great relief. Yeah. There's yeah. even a name for it, and we'll figure out what it's we're going to do. It's called lump on the side of the neck. Yes. But, you know, the thing is, once you've had cancer, everything that goes wrong in your life you think is cancer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 let me just turn your mic down for a second because we get what we call slap back. Now it's okay. Okay, fine. Anyway, um, uh, I, um, 
um, you know, I, I keep, as I was, I, I said this to, to Will yesterday as well, uh, that I keep waiting for the thing where I go in and I say, I've got this little, my, my toe is twitching, and they go, oh, it's, <laughs> that's very bad, and it's cancer, and it's going to kill you. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm waiting for that doctor, right? Yeah. So, so every time I have uh, a new doctor to go to, like I went to this neurologist, I'm figuring, now oh, the numb feet, it means I've got some kind of a heart problem, whatever. No, he says it's a kind of a spinal stenosis and you need to have physical therapy. That's good. Oh, that's good, yeah. Um, go get a massage once every week or something. But you know what happened with me? Now, tell me this, because you only, you would remember. Did I have hair on my legs? I don't remember. <laughs> I have no idea. Well, I don't have hair on my legs anymore. Well, you know, I'll tell and you that. under my armpits, I hardly have any hair left. Yes, that's happened to me, too. You don't have any hair on your head either. What did you expect the rest of your body? Well, this is different than this and the armpits. <laughs> Well, How to begin with, I was counting on take, surgically taking the hair from my armpits and putting it on my head. Oh, but, you, you know. thought that was going to work. Ah, yeah, well. But, no, I, I what I understood was you bald, well, you gray from the, t uh, from the bottom up, is it? I, I think. Your beard, if you have a beard, you'll go gray first in your beard before your hair goes gray. That, that most guys, when they still have regular you know brown or black or whatever they have yeah. and they still have that on their head they they if they have chin whiskers they just go gray first you've yeah. seen that yeah but but anyway I, I i don't have hair on my body anymore i mean i have some on my a little bit on my chest a little bit but they're flimsy I, yeah well it's one more thing they don't tell you about about growing old <laughs> you lose everything <laughs> you, it, I have less hair on my legs too. I don't have to shave them as frequently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think my wife said she's having the same problem. God, getting old sucks. I don't care what you write in your blog. It sucks. Yeah. Well, if you can't change it, are you going to sit around and lament? No, no, absolutely okay. not. Uh, but I should go out and kick my heels up. Only I don't have the strength. So. Uh, <laughs> I, isn't it a wonderful, given all, everything that's wrong in the world, isn't the story of the soccer team all being rescued wonderful? Yes, except for the fact that I tried to get news on it today. And when we're recording this is the oh, day. Oh, and you've got Trump instead. You've got <laughs> Trump with his fucking, you know, Supreme Court justice. And I don't give right. a shit about that. You know, yeah. I really don't. Uh but, well, I mean, it, it looked like it looked so impossible from the drawings of the mountain that they're stuck in and the river in there and they don't know how to swim. And I mean, they're tight. They're, they're young. They're little kids. Yeah. And uh, and they did it. They did it. You know, there was one um, Thai Navy SEAL who died. Yeah. Uh, which is really terrible. But but the kids and the coach all got out. It's just uh, in, in the world we live in, that is such great news. Yeah. No, it, it, it is absolutely wonderful, you know, that that they they managed to get them out. And I wanted to see that story. And all I'm getting are stories about this fucking Supreme Court nominee with the bad skin. You know? <laughs> Did you have to go that far? <laughs> I mean, Durst wanted to keep joking about the fact that his name is Brett. <laughs> you know, imagine hey, I mean, hey, hey, hey. My surgeon, who is the whole reason I'm still alive, his name is Brett. Well, then I won't diss the name Brett. Then. <laughs> so, Just so Durst and I in private moments will do it. <laughs> Not in front of you. Uh, but uh, anyway, you you look healthy as hell. I mean, except for that schmata you're wearing on your head. Oh, it look it. It's a beautiful hat. What's wrong Why with this Why did you hat? wear a babushka? I think that would go good on you. A what? A babushka. You know, the the handkerchief around the head. I do that when I'm cleaning house. I'll wear it next time. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I mean, how big how big is the bald spot? I mean, is it? Well, it's not completely bald. It's just so thin you can see my my scalp through it. There's oh. no way to not see my scalp. I see. Could and it's back here in the back, and it's getting much thinner in the front now, too. Now, how long do they keep doing these iron infusions? Oh, I'm done. I had six. I'm done. Okay, so will the hair grow back now? Uh, questionable. Nobody. I, I think the answer is no, and they didn't want to tell me. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, you, you know, it's funny. I, I, you know, you, you want a little better answer than that. Here's, here's the point I'm making. Well, like yesterday when I went to this doctor for, the, for what we thought was neuropathy, but he has said it's not neuropathy, okay? The numbness in the feet. And he says it happens when you lie down because you're hitting a nerve and the nerve is causing it to exacerbate and whatever. He said, I don't know, but I've heard some people say that putting a pillow between your legs will help. Well, it doesn't help me. But the, uh, the fact was that he said to me, some people have told me that putting a pillow between your legs, you're a <coughs> neurologist for crying out loud. You have a little better scientific description of this thing than some friends told me, put a pillow between your legs. There's a whole lot medical people don't know. They do the best they can. You know, yeah. And sometimes it's like, you know, maybe your hair will grow back. Maybe yeah. a pillow will work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's the sum total of medicine these days. Uh, someday, I don't yeah. think so. I think what I've gone through is, is pretty much a miracle. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and the interventional radiology, when they went in through the side of me to fix something in here and in a hole no bigger than a pencil eraser, I think that's a modern miracle. You yeah. know, and that it works. Yeah. Are, are you used to operations now? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> I know my way around that hospital so well. I mean, to go, okay, just to put the juice in me, let's get this thing over yeah, with. Exactly. <laughs> it's just, I, I've kind of made a study when I've been lucid in the hospital. You know, over the past year, it adds up to almost a month over the several visits in the hospital. <laughs> And I know way more than I ever wanted to know about the medical community. Well, you know, you know what I found that I, I, it was a big deal with me when I was uh, when I was in the hospital uh, with the kidney stone. Is you know they had to put a lot of uh, draw blood on me and do stuff like that a lot. And uh, after about the uh, you know I always used to blood draw always bothered me. You know it was always oh okay, you're gonna put the needle in the arm. By the time I was through that hospital stay, they stick needles in my arm and I just go go ahead. Hey, take Me it. too. I just I lay go, out my oh, arm. By the way, <laughs> I say ahead. take it out of my hand because they have a hard time finding a vein in my right where they normally go. So I said, just take it out of my hand here because you can see the veins there. And they go, really? You don't mind it? I said, I mind it there more than you stabbing me 20 times trying to find a vein. You know. Uh, it's but, amazing what you can get used to in old age. Yeah, well, I mean, what I'm saying is it, it, you've kind of probably gotten used to the fact, well, i got to go in for a little operation today, you know. Yeah, well, that's when I think about this, you know, there may be reasons to remove this lump and maybe there are reasons not to remove it and we'll figure that out. But I realized that compared to what I went through last year, go ahead. They should, they should replace your face and body in the operation game is what they should do. You know the operation <laughs> game? Where, did you ever play that as a kid? No. Operation where there's this kind of fat guy and you have to remove his kidney, but it has an electrical probe, so if you touch anything wrong it buzzes that, that's the operation game i never heard of it yeah i mean is it something that comes in a box that, like that's, monopoly that's obviously where my neurologist got his medical education <laughs> oh come on now come on <laughs> that's not with, nice with the put the pillows between the legs that's no, not I'm, nice no he's a nice guy i have a lot of doctors who are nice guys uh i just wonder if they're accurate that's all <laughs> you know i found out having nothing to do with our organ recital here. Yeah. Um, I found out two really interesting small things this week. Really? One of them is that since 2004, mm -hmm. there has been a restaurant called Rick's Cafe in Casablanca, Morocco. Since when? Since 2004. Really? And, and it looks, and you can go online and look at some videos and stuff. They're not very good videos. They're mostly amateur videos, so they're not really very good. But it makes you feel like you're in Rick's Cafe, just like the movie. They, it looks they, just like they, it. They, and yeah. it's owned by an American woman who used to be a diplomat. And the other interesting thing I just found out this morning is that in December... Uh, you know what I find interesting about that fact? That it took that long for somebody to put a Rick's Cafe in Casablanca. Uh, you know, I don't know what the political climate was right after World War II. It might not have been something you could do then, right. you know? and maybe it took a while but you're right that that 
I was kind of surprised about that too. And and when you go there and sit there having coffee or a drink or whatever, uh, and the piano player is obviously playing as time goes by. Uh, of course. Do, do cops come in and round up the usual suspect? <laughs> what a good idea. Yeah. What we should we should write her a note. <laughs> they should set that up. Yeah. The other interesting thing from this morning, just before we called is that Israel is sending up a spaceship in December that will land on the moon next year. Really? That's Yeah. That's what at least that's what the Jerusalem Post says this morning. And uh, yeah, and uh, Elon Musk will be there to greet him. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> Jews in space. That's a weird concept and the fodder for great many jokes. You know. Well, start working. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna have. There's gonna be a lot of room for them. <laughs> How far away is the moon? Two hundred thirty-nine thousand miles, but for you, two hundred thirty-eight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're gonna get in such trouble when you post this. You are gonna get in so much trouble. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You gotta be Jews and space jokes. I can't believe that they think they're really gonna land some. They're gonna land a man on the moon, or they're just gonna land a I rocket on the moon. Enough to, not a moon. I think just a probe. Oh, oh, well, that's that's. Oh, that doesn't interest you. Elon Musk could do that on a Sunday. Well, he hasn't yet. Nobody could. He he. Is it so? Listen, well, wouldn't he guy, have if have he you, could? Have you seen what this guy can do? He he solved the whole problem of reusable rockets by having them simply come back and land on the pad. <laughs> come on! For years we've been dishing them out of the ocean. He sends a thing up does whatever does it comes back down and goes right back to the launch pad where they fill her up again with some more fuel and do it again <laughs> now tell me he can't go to the moon if he wanted to well why would he resist a man like him well there was a lot of if it were possible there's no reason for him to resist well in the initial the reason we went to the moon you know was that uh, because it was there Right. Once we got there, we went, what the fuck are we going to do with this place? And so we never Maybe went Maybe this new one will pick up all the junk we left behind. That uh, Just a cleanup job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little vacuum on it. The thing is that uh, the, uh, everybody was saying, well, what do we do now that we're there? Because the moon isn't much. But it is, no. <laughs> I think, is a good place to launch other rockets out into space. You could do it a lot easier and so on. But we never went back. Uh, I wrote a little story once about something like that, about them uh, first men on the moon, and they land, and they find some stuff, and it turns out, really, they weren't the first that we had been there before, but why didn't we ever go back? And the fact is, we never went back. We did all that work, and we never went, never went back. back. Do you, re you sound so cynical, but do you remember, we watched the moon landing we were married at the time, and we lived in Riverdale, and we watched it on television together, and it was thrilling. Oh, yeah. It was thrilling. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, but you know what it was what that bothered me about it? I didn't feel that people in general realized the significance of what had just happened. That for the first time in the history of mankind, we had left the cradle. Well, as far as we know. Well. We had left the cradle of our existence. And uh, the, I don't think it, it, it was lost on people. They were all going, why are we spending money to do that? When blah, 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 I don't blah. think there were lots of people saying that. I think it was thrilling, and I think most people saw it that way. No, we, we had a, a internet. We had a, a American, the USA, USA, we're there first, you know, that kind of thing. You know, before we sent people to the moon, we sent probes to the moon. And they yeah. sent pictures back. And I remember before the person landing on the moon, uh, there was a big deal that, uh, at a previous probe, probe that um, that it would go behind the moon, and for the first time we would see the opposite side of the moon because mm -hmm. it always has only right, one the face dark side of the moon. tortoise. Right. And there was a there was a New Yorker cartoon that I saved for years and years leading up to that. That it showed the, the spaceship coming toward the moon, the back side of the moon, yeah. and it was carved out, you know, so concave, like a like a, a theater set, and it said Act Two, Scene One. <laughs> 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 I saved that for years and years and years. Yeah, uh, but uh, I I uh, you know I, I just I just wish we had. I guess if I have any regrets in my life, 
It's that we didn't. You didn't go to the moon. They didn't select you. No, we didn't go. We didn't go further. Uh, the fact is, if we we stopped the space program then, and the only space program we had was what I called NASA hauling. You know, it was just NASA was hauling we stuff. We went to up. Mars. Yeah, but we sent probes. I mean, sending people. But there were great well, photographs, I, and they, they got a if, lot if of they had con- good science if, stuff. If they had continued on the path that they were going, and not stopped. That, that space program, the really uh, the the exploration part of the space program, uh, we could have been to Mars in my lifetime. But but we're not. I, I'm not smart enough to know what the problems are. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I I, that, I mean that, it can't it can't be. Oh, I that, that was my bailiwick because when I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut, and there was no such thing as an astronaut when I wanted to be one. So how did you know? <laughs> Well, because I, I knew I wanted to go to the moon. And so all my friends used to mock me as Moon Rocks Bennett, you know, uh, or Schwarzman. Uh, and, and, uh, but I always wanted to be an astronaut. You know, I always wanted to go to space. Um, and uh, I, I never was able to. I mean, it, it's just that I would have thought that by now we'd be have, have landed somebody on Mars, and we could have by now if we hadn't stopped. And you know, I thought by now we would have cured cancer. I mean, it's, no, it's harder well, than us laymen think. I didn't. In do your these case, things. in your case, they came close. You know. Well, yeah. I mean, but in general, it should be like the common cold. I thought by the time I was this old, we could treat it the same way as the common cold or the flu or something. Well, so, um, I, I don't know that, believe it or not, I don't know that we've ever put the effort behind it like we should. You but, know, but cancer or space travel? A cancer. That if we ha- had a concerted effort said we're going to spend a large amount of money and we're going to do it like we did with space, okay, mm-hmm. I think we could have solved it. But I don't, well, th- I don't think we've had that kind of priority, believe it or not. Plus... What do you do with all the lack of parking spaces if more people are still alive? Well, I, are you referring to space travel or cancer? I'm, now? I, I'm referring to cancer. Isn't oh. cancer a process of elimination? I don't think so. I don't think they're enough. You know, but I mean, if, if, if you could cure cancer, all right, how many more people would be alive? And how many more parking spaces would that take up? <laughs> you don't need parking spaces. I, I've you always, don't have a car. I have always thought in terms of parking spaces, I'm from California. <laughs> and I hear there are not enough parking spaces in San Francisco anymore. So that's because we've cured a lot of these diseases. Right, Look, right. I, I figure at, at, at 78, going on 79, I'm, take, I'm, I'm taking up too much room myself, you know. I sometimes feel guilty about that. Sunday, I went to a birthday party for my friend Jack Garfine, who turned 88. Ah! Boy, is that old. My friend Millie is in the hospital this week. She's going to be 93 pretty soon. Here's the best part. He was there, <laughs> and if people go on my... Facebook page, I posted the speech he gave, which is about 13 minutes. And it's, you can see in the same shot another guy. And that's one of his friends who was also in the concentration camps. They didn't know each other from the concentration camps. They met each other afterwards. But this other guy, I have never seen, he's got to be maybe in his 80s. I've never seen a more healthy looking guy in my life. I mean, <laughs> One of the things I always talk about is that we age at dramatically different rates. Some people at 50 have had enough things go wrong or whatever, and they look really old. Other people at 90 have had terrific lives or recovered from whatever happened to them well, and they look and, and operate terrifically. You want, yeah. And it's you can't go by age on how we how we get old. It's different I, I, I'll, for every I'll person. I'll tell you something, and then we, then I guess we got to go. But you, I remember you asked me to go with you to your high school reunion. Yes. And so I had never been in a room with a group of people who within a, a year age range, okay, uh-huh. were all basically the same age. Right, yeah. And it was amazing how some looked, you couldn't tell that this was a group of people all of approximately the same age because some looked really young and some looked, and some really, looked old. really old. 
That's yeah. what I. That would be a great photograph to have to make my point. Yeah. That you can't judge what people are going to be like physically by their actual age. Right. It's very different. Once you get old, yeah. Um, younger you usually can if you discount big deal terrible diseases, but um. But it, the range. I mean, it always surprises me when I see photographs of someone. If you ask me, I would say, oh. She's probably uh, 55 or 60, and they tell me she's 82. <laughs> do, you, do you get invited to your high school reunion still? No, I think they must have stopped having them. I think I got one, believe it or not. Um, Recently? A while back, uh, got something where they were going to hold one. And I'm just thinking, how many people are going to show up? I mean, it's just basically you're going to go there, and who's dead? You know? Yeah, that's true. When You graduated in 57 from high school? Yep, mm-hmm. I graduated in 58, 68, 78, 88, 98, 08, 08. That's 60 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's 60, 61 for me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 61 yes. years. Hey, listen, you know, I, I never thought I would ever say this, but it's, it's great talking to an ex-wife. You know, I, I always <laughs> look forward to this. You know, it's, it's, it's special, okay? Yes, it is. And yes, let's do it again in two weeks, okay? Okay, you got it. Uh, or any other time you want to do it. You know, this I'll is great. You know. Hope everybody enjoyed it. And that's my uh, that's my exer there. She's uh, Ronnie Bennett, and you can find her at RonnieBennett.net, right? No. Oh, time, goes, time, go, time goes by dot net. I kept thinking of your email address. Time goes by dot net, and she writes some. She's a great writer, you know. Ah, oh, thank you. Thanks, Ronnie. Bye. Talk to you soon. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. And that's my ex-wife. Uh, I'm pretty. Uh, I'm pretty lucky that in my later life we have managed to have a friendly relationship. Um, not that it wasn't a great marriage. It really was a. Uh, I mean, I, I'm an asshole when it comes to being married to me. I just ask a girlfriend. Um, I, she's lucky though. I'm not the asshole I used to be. Let me explain something to you. Uh, I, this is the second night in a row I've worn the same outfit. Here's the reason why. Okay, uh, we just did that interview with my wife, my ex-wife, Ronnie, and uh, I did it yesterday. Okay, and. Uh, so I was wearing this when I did the interview with Durst, and then I did the interview with her after it. And then I thought, well, today, if I wear a different outfit and then we go to the tape, it's not going to match that well. So look, wait a minute, I'll, show you the, uh, I'll show you the beginning of the interview. So I, it, it, if you look, I'm wearing exactly what I'm wearing right now. See? Look wait at that. a minute. What do we have here? What is that? What, are See? you going to a British wedding? What is See, that, that, so I, uh, I've had to wear this shirt two days in a row, okay? Just, to, just to, so I match with the picture. Boy, what I do for this show. <laughs> well, let's see here. I think it's about time that we uh, open up the Skype the lines to see if anybody wants to call, okay? All right. Ah, uh, my eye is itching tonight. Uh, they haven't been as bad today, though. The allergies haven't been as bad today. God, we've had... Today was brutally hot again. They're not as brutally hot as yesterday. Uh, it, it, it seems as though we're just not having any cool weather. You know, those days where you go, Oh, this is a beautiful, beautiful day. Isn't it a love... No, you go out there and you go, Ah, it's hot. Now, yesterday it was like 90 degrees, but there wasn't any humidity. So it was that dry heat, and, and that's, you know, that's okay. That I can live with. But anyway, uh, if you want to get a hold of us on this program, we have a thing called the Citizen Panel, and somebody will call in a moment, and then we'll be able to uh, uh, show you how it works. Uh, and um, uh, uh, they use a thing called Skype. And if you want to find out how to call this program, just go to gabnet.net, G-A-B-N-E-T dot net. And over there, you will be able to see uh, uh, um, the um, uh, how to do it. it on the right-hand side of the page. It tells you all about where to get Skype and how it works and an easy way to dial it. And, and it's, it, just go over there. Uh, I, and you won't miss the show either because it's playing over there. The video is playing over there. So 
you might just want to hop over there. Uh, I, 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 let me let me thank uh, China. I guess that's how it's pronounced. Ruoho. She su just subscribed to my YouTube channel. You know we have um, a handful. I have six hundred. I had six six hundred and fifty. Uh, she, I guess it's a she, uh, becomes number uh, number six hundred and fifty one. Uh, I would really like you to tell all your friends just to go over there and subscribe to this channel uh, because that would be really nice if you did that, okay? So, anyway. Uh, what, nobody's going to call now? I'm just going to sit here with my finger up my ass? Son of a bitch. Um, I've got to, let me pull this out. Oh, well, you know what I did today? I, I, I was bad. You know, I stick on this diet constantly and and i find lately that i'm not losing weight uh but i'm not gaining it either i just fluctuate back and forth between about a three pound area so today i said fuck it if i'm not going to gain weight uh i'll uh, or lose weight uh then i'll just i'll have something i want and i got uh on the subway and i went all the way down to 23rd street where is this place called Italy? And Italy is uh, this uh, just this uh, supermarket of uh, of decadence of, uh, of Italian food, and uh, they have great ravioli. And so uh, the kind I used to have when I was a kid, my mother would make it. You know, they, it it's not cooked; they have to boil it. And uh, I went down there and I picked up uh, the small raviolis, three quarter pound of that, three quarter pound of the prosciutto ravioli. And brought it back with a jar of uh, of sauce uh, from uh, Lydia Bastianich, you know Lydia's kitchen. She has a well. It actually these sauces used to be uh, what's his name, uh, the guy, the other guy who got caught with his hand up somebody's pants or something. Uh, um, um, oh God, now I can't remember it. I was talking about him today. Anyway, he, he's one of the owners of Italy, but I guess they decided we better not have any of his products on the shelves. So it's like he never existed, okay? Um, uh, and uh, uh, he, uh, we used to get his sauce, and, and now the sauce that he had, we get in her flavor. And Lydia is one of the other owners of, of Italy. Uh, and uh, so... Uh, uh, where, where, you know, where nobody's calling me? Jeez, Almighty, what's with you folks? Am I on? Yes, I'm on, but nobody else is. I, I don't n notice anybody is on. Am I? Uh, am I on? Yes, I. It looks like I'm on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, hello, uh, Chenna Ruho. I don't know how to pronounce it. Ruho. How do you pronounce R U O H O? Ruho? Ruhoho? Rohoho? And I'm sorry if I'm mangling your name, okay? I didn't want to mangle it. Anyway, I see Tom Yamaguchi is online, so he's going to call. Jeez, where, where is everybody tonight? Uh, Phil didn't say that tonight was a Phil free night, so I figured Phil would call. Yeah, well, anyway. Um, so, um, um, uh, what, what's that guy's name? Where, where's the, where, where's the, the croc shoes? Uh, uh, and uh, he's not exactly the kind of guy you'd like to have lying on top of you. I think that's one of the, you know, you never hear about, uh, if, if George Clooney came on to a woman, I don't think she'd argue about that. Or Brad Pitt. Uh, they're, they're, but if you're really ugly like these guys, I mean, you know, Harvey Weinstein, what an oaf. I mean, just a complete oaf uh, and an ogre. Uh, but, you know, but if he looked like Brad Pitt, it might be a different story. But then again, if he looked like Brad Pitt, he wouldn't have to try so sleazily. Okay. Anyway, um, um, where there is nobody tonight. This is just, well, here we go. Always to the rescue, ladies and gentlemen. Tom, oh, Yama, Tom Yamaguchi. I don't know. Where is everybody? Nobody's, any, nobody's calling tonight. 
this is yeah, what? this is amazing. Yeah, this is amazing. I mean, it's been you've been getting a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, uh, a lot of people. So I don't know what's going on. Yeah, so I, I I have no idea. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Let me see the T-shirt. I know that T-shirt. Oh, yes, <laughs> I forgot. Yes, you gave me this T-shirt. That General Magic was a company that started up doing some very interesting doodads. You know. Yes, uh, I, I and forgot that. when I called you, I forgot I was wearing this this T-shirt. Yeah, today. yeah. I don't. This even, is actually. I, Huh? Uh, from your demo at Whole Earth Access store here in West Berkeley. Whole Earth Access, and I and I was giving those away at Whole Earth Access. Are you no. doing a demo of of this uh, handheld computer oh, that oh, uh, oh, I'm oh. trying to yes. remember, but, but it, General it, Magic did the software. It was a GUI interface. Yeah, and I'm trying and to remember. It was it was, it was also a up to the internet. Was it Sony? That had it was it a Sony? I don't remember. It was uh, something pa magic. Uh, oh god! The Magic Cap software was the stuff that. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm trying to remember the name of the Magic Link. But I'm trying to remember the name of the. I'm Magic Link. Uh, magic Link, but I'm trying. Oh, was it called Magic Link? It was called Magic Link. Yes, and I remember I had one, and it wasn't bad. You know, for its, oh, for know. its time. I know. You, you, you showed, you, as I said, you did a great demo of it. Yeah. I was... uh, and uh, oh, I already had a handheld computer. I used to have a Scion. Boy, I can't even those. remember what it did exactly. But I remember it had a small screen and it had, used, a, used a pen, didn't it? Used I believe pen. it did. Yeah. 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 And uh, I, I these guys were friends of mine. And I think that's why I, uh, why I, why I, you know, did the demo, was as a as a friendly gesture to them. Uh, here we go. Let me see. Oh, there's there's Phil. Hey. Uh, yeah, Phil. Wh where have you been? I mean, God, nobody was calling tonight. It, I mean, I had I have Tom, which is he always comes to the rescue when I need him. You know. You you just said you were opening the Skype lines 15 seconds ago. No, I didn't. No. no. No? That's what I heard. Well, you maybe. Why, why, don't you ref, why don't you refresh your browser? Well, yeah, I, you I rebooted last night. I, I was listening to you uh, talk about your shirt and how you had to change it, uh, but not change it because yeah. of the recordings. I, and then with, within maybe 10 seconds of that, you said I'm going to the Skype lines, and that's when I turned off the browser. And that was that was about eight minutes ago. Wow! Uh, you know yeah. something? You you <laughs> really you you really you, you you really have a slow internet connection. No, I thought you were going long. That's uh, no. You know you what know? happens sometimes? Sometimes I don't know what it is. I know that. Uh, like with uh, when I click on my little thing here on on the on the Gabnet site to hear the audio, yeah, and maybe I put it on pause and then later on I go back to listen to it. It picks up where it left off like three hours earlier. Maybe that's what happened to me. I you know I was just sitting here dumb and happy listening to your conversation, and uh, well I said oh, he's going well, long. Okay, people may not know this, and I I saw this listed. Um, Hold on a second, and I gotta go find it. But if you go to the, um, oh, what happened to? Uh, oh, there it is. There, there it is. There's a YouTube. Supposedly, uh, there's some way you can actually go backward on the live show. Really? Just, uh, uh, I guess you can. It, yeah. it, it has oh, about a, it has yeah. about a four hour window that you can go back through. Although we only have a two hour show. But if you come to our show at, say, 11.30, and you love this show so much, you want to see it from the very beginning, you just zip it back and watch it. It has a DVR function. I didn't, I didn't realize that until just the other day. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah I actually, uh, yeah, I was just that sitting could here. Have been, that, could, that could have been what happened. Uh, well, I'm not watching it on a, on a recording. I was watching it on the GabNet site. Yeah. Well, uh, who knows? You know, who knows? I, yeah. I, 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 I don't know. And I can't. Uh, the mystery is why nobody's calling. Maybe they're all twenty minutes behind. I have no idea. 
you know, uh, I don't either. That's the first time that's happened. But yeah. I'm glad Tom showed up. You know? Yeah. Hey, Tom, doesn't he look healthier lately since he had oh, the yeah. stent does, put in? Better, yeah. 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 Of the and I bet he'll, I bet he'll. See, I'm not getting a picture now. No? No, I'm not getting a picture. I see, see a still. Really? Oh. oh, you see, but we, we, I see him fine. Yeah. Okay. That's well, the I'm other. Angry. That's the other great mystery we can't ever solve. <laughs> you know, we don't. We don't understand. You, know, you yeah. get what you pay for. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah. But. So, uh, what you guys got going today? What do we got going today? Uh, yeah. N- nothing. I. Uh, I. I went and I looked my. Uh, like uh, Three. At, at the at the uh, at the uh, at Mount Sinai, uh, they have yeah. this thing called my chart, and you can go to it, and it's everything about your stuff, right? Yeah. I can go back and look. I looked at some of the stuff from my kidney problems, right? Yeah. So anyway, I go there and it, it, I look, p- click on the visit yesterday with my doctor, and what the doctor has there is his notes that he took. Mm-hmm. It is now on the permanent record. Hello, hello, Bree. How are you? Hey. It, it, it's on my Hi. permanent hello. record that that. I, yeah. Hold on one second. I've got to, uh, I've got to turn off your uh, broadcast. I have the app on. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you fine. Anyway, what I was, okay. was going to say is it is Great. now in print. I'm in Manila, Philippines. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Oh, for all for anyone who I want to show it to that I couldn't remember who the governor of New York was or the mayor of, of New York City. He, he put that down? Yeah, it's in the notes. <laughs> what, what was his reason for doing that? He, he asked me. So he said he couldn't, he, he knew who the president was, but he didn't know who the mayor and the, and the governor were of New York. You know. So uh, I, it, it was very embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> It was very embarrassing. And right after I told him I was a talk show host, you know, uh, that, that, then I started to think about it and I went, well, how often have we talked about de Blasio or Cuomo on this show? Oh, Cuomo, not so much. De Blasio, I've always hated his guts. Well, you so. keep bringing him up every now and then, but basically we talk about national stuff because this is a national show. It's an international show, actually, to be honest with you, you know. So hi Bree, how you doing? Hi Alex. Yeah, it's been a while, huh? Yeah, yeah. Are you still in Dubai at this moment, or are you somewhere else? No, I'm in the Philippines right now. What are you doing in the Philippines? Ah, uh, you know, having a vacation. Oh, having a vacation. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah. But you're still living in Dubai. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for the time being. Yeah. <laughs> Ray, is this the rainy season in the Philippines? Uh, we're getting some. We're getting yeah. some. Yeah, but I don't think you'd be go. You went there for a vacation, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think he'd go somewhere for a vacation where it was the rainy season. Uh, I just thought this time of the year, uh, I, I could be mistaken because it's on the other side of the international time zone or day zone. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. You know, uh, I know that they have some odd weather there. Yeah. Well, I'd like to be well, where we are. Uh... What? Right. Uh oh. Did we lose yeah. you? Did we lose you, Bree? He cut out. Uh, I'm here. Oh, right, he's right there. now, it, the rain comes and goes, <laughs> but the the temperature's really nice. It's like 83 degrees today. Yeah. With a nice breeze. Uh, better than here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we have yeah. a, we have a, uh, please, if you have children, have them tune out now. We have a sex show going on in one of the quadrants of our, of uh, our. Oh, it's a, a man, dog, love. Act. Yeah, this man, dog, yeah. love association. That dog, there's a, do- uh, uh, Tommy Amaguchi has a dog. Is that your dog, Tom? Well, it's, uh, we're watching the dog. We're, we're yeah. dog sitting. Apparently that dog, do- that dog, no, that either that dog likes you or thinks you're filthy. One or the other. <laughs> Both. Did you eat something sweet recently? No. Does the dog do this a lot? Oh, yes. The dog does this all the time. And, you know, My does that. I, I don't mind it when a I never mind it when a cat did it, but when a dog does it, they have that dog breath. Oh, oh, too much noise. Uh, Bree? Bree? Oh, boy. Oh, 
background noise there. Uh, Bree, Bree, a lot of background noise, Bree. Can you hear me, Bree? Oh. Yeah, a sorry about that. A lot of background noise. Let uh, me try to. Let me hit the headset off. Yeah. Uh, well, we just we just lost him. What? Tom, I do when my dog does that is I put my hand up and I let her lick the hand. You know, uh -huh. so you know I'll get let her get one or two on the face, but it's it's annoying. So uh, and I don't want to push her away, so uh -huh. I just let her lick my hand. Well, as I say, the yeah. worst thing is dog breath. You know. uh, yeah. her, my dog's breath smells better than mine. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm sure. So her breath isn't that bad. It isn't? Oh, okay. No, it's not that bad. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Alex. How are you? Good. I read your thing. He sent me a thing, a very funny thing, written by, uh, I'm trying to remember his name now, uh, the great writer Barry. out of Miami. Some guy named Barry? But, but yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, let me find it here. Uh, I don't. I don't want to read it. Take would take too long. But uh, yeah, it was pretty on. funny. <laughs> Where's my mail? Here we go. Uh, by uh, by Dave Barry, who is yeah, yeah. I believe he's a writer in Miami. I I knew yeah, him yeah. briefly when I was working in Miami, and it, it, it's an article. It's just an article about colonoscopy, having a colonoscopy, and yeah. he just makes things really fun. You know. <laughs> He says, you know, by the time you're finished eliminating everything, you're eliminating food you haven't eaten yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it was pretty funny because I had to go pick up my kit today. Now, here's the thing. I, I, for anybody, here we go. Doctor Z. Here we go. The waiting room is open. The waiting room is open. Um, uh, a little I got hint, to report, too. A little hint to, to all the people out there going to get colonoscopies. Now, what did they tell you for the prep? What did they give you? Well, they, I went to pick it up, and they wanted 50 bucks for it, so my wife left it there. And he said, here's a, here's a website you can go get a coupon for, wait and me, then wait. come back with that. And I went, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know, it was a gallon of this crap. I don't know what it was, so she didn't pick it up. Well, you see, you don't want to do that. There <clears> is another way, and I, it's another thing that I use, and I forget the name of it now, or I tell you. But it's a little bottle, about yay big. Yeah. And you just down down it. That's it. And it doesn't taste bad. You know, I, I, you can get it in any any grocery store, uh, pharmacy rather, and they're like about three bucks a piece. Yeah, and, I don't know what it was. She went to pick it up. But, and, uh, no, but, it, but the other way they do it is they have you drink a gallon of this shit. And it's ridiculous because yeah, you can like do in it. That, in that article, yeah. Yeah. He was talking about a, what do you say it was a. A, a liter that was like 32 gallons? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a liter, which is 32 gallons, as he put it. <laughs> but the thing is that uh, my doctor uh, told me about this stuff. I did it. Uh, and then the next time, he, the, his office sent me a thing saying, get this stuff and drink a gallon of it and so on. And I called him up and I said, hey, you just had me drink that little stuff, you know. It was in the stores. And he said, oh, okay, that'd be fine. Anything that cleans you out. And I, So I don't know why they constantly tell people to do this other way of preparation because well, it's, it's, gru it's gruel, it's grueling, it's horrible. Well, the last time was, what, 11 years ago? Yeah. And they had me standing on my head doing enemas and shit in the bathroom. What? I was putting shit up my ass, and I was standing on my head putting these things up my ass trying to get the... And then jump into the toilet and squirt. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Are, are, are you sure that you that was you were actually having a medical procedure, or was that some kind of whorehouse you went to? <laughs> Everybody was laughing. I'll tell you what, I thought it was. I was going, what the hell is all this crap? And then, and then she said, oh no, just take this and drink it. And I went, that's it. I said, great, because the last time, I thought I was going to a you know. A, a, I don't know what the hell I was doing. I, I thought I was going to have to go outside and put a garden hose up my ass. They had a they had a, a thing that I first used the first time I ever got a colonoscopy, but they stopped giving it to people because they found some people died from it. I don't know how, uh, but it was kind of a, a seltzer kind of thing. And then uh, I, I, I was told this other stuff, and they just say he said, "Yeah, you just drink that." And uh, drink a lot of a lot of water, and then just sit around and wait for the the. Uh, the explosion to come, you know. Yeah, the uh, the shuttle. The way the shuttle. he describes it is is it's like you're the shuttle. You're the, you're the shuttle. <laughs> you know. 
You're the rocket. <laughs> he had to strap himself <laughs> into the toilet because to keep him in place. Uh, it's a very funny article if anybody can lay their hands on it. I'm sure if you look up Dave Barry colonoscopy on, online, yeah, it, it'll be there somewhere. Point. Yeah. Well, I had a CT scan this morning. Did you really? Yeah, they uh, had me get there at 5.45 a.m. Why do you do for, these things so early? Uh, because there's not a wait, there is no aggravation, and I can have the rest of my day without... Uh, I, I was at work by 8 o'clock. Oh, okay. All so, right. uh, you know, and, and, I, and I came home afterwards. Well, what, about, uh, what were they scanning for? Uh, kidney stone, uh, kidney, bladder... Uh, uh, I had some blood in the urine, yeah, and uh, so they just wanted to make sure uh, that there wasn't any cancer uh, in my bladder because I have a thickening of the wall. Yeah, well, I mean, it, that's it, yeah. Caged. But but you've had a you've had a, 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 a what do you call it? A, a, the other oscopy, um, the um, uh, cystoscopy. Cystoscopy. Which uh, goes right into your bladder and looks around to see if there's anything. So if, they, if there was something there, they, you would have seen. They would have seen it. Then. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, but they discovered that I had a thickening of the uh, wall of the bladder prior to this. Yeah. And so they, since I had a CT scan a year ago, they wanted to compare and see if there was any differences. Yeah. And. and? Uh, no differences. No differences. So, really, you know what you, you know what you've gotten. You've gotten on the doctor's hamster wheel now. <laughs> you know, uh, first it was this. Oh well, wait a minute. We found something else. You know, it's like going to a real bad repair shop. Yeah, but I would you rather know? that they they err on the side of caution. Yeah. Uh, the you know, and then also they wanted to clear me before they do the next uh, heart procedure. Uh, they wanted to make sure that I didn't have something going on that needed to be addressed before they did the uh, the, the next heart, uh, uh, what do you call it, when they stick the wire in me. Well, they stick the wire in you. Okay. Well, you know. It, it, Light me up. Just Speaking get, of wires, I'm getting a couple put in my back in another month or so. Jeez, what? <laughs> Is there anything... Is that by for the stimulation way, or just uh, because you... You know why uh, I do this show? No, they're Please. trying to put some... Uh, they're going to try and do something about the pain in my legs. They're going to put two uh, probes up the sympathetic uh, nerve in my back. And, and then they're going to put some uh, remote control thing to uh, interrupt the sympathetic nerve pain in my back to stop the pain. If it works, they're going to put is something pain, in my ass. How is any Don't pain sympathetic? Just, Wait, wait, wait. Don't let your kids get a hold of that remote control because they'll be sitting there shocking you, you shit. making you do the jumping bean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, um, boy, yeah, don't, don't you don't do you feel a little healthier now, Tom? I mean, you know, you don't have any real problems, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, pigs. I got to tell you, you know, I was the other day I was thinking about it because I, after I went to the doctor and he said, well, you, what you've got is you got a compressed nerve. And that's what's causing the numbness in the feet. Uh, and some days it's worse than others because maybe you slept wrong last night. So we're going get to you, get yourself some physical therapy and come back and see me in two months. And I thought to myself, I thought for sure this was going to be the cancer. Or this was going to be, you know, the <laughs> thing, right? And I, then I said to myself, you know, actually, and I'm working out too, so I was rem I'm kind of remarkably healthy doing good you know for my age uh, because all you guys are falling fucking apart except well, for you, tom yeah. tom's not you're not falling apart are you tom oh yeah hopefully not <laughs> hey, he's riding <laughs> bikes he's riding bikes that's uh, good for him. I was listening to your monologue with your ex-wife mm -hmm. uh, i get a phone call from my friend he's 85 he was in walmart today and when he was getting off the little scooter that they ride around, he fell and, and hit his head uh, and, and, and uh, hurt his back, uh, 85. You know, you can't, you can't win. So, but he was in Walmart. Oh, and, really? Uh, using the scooter. And he's not fat, you know? So I don't know what he was uh, doing on the scooter, you know? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I, I, I sometimes I'm just thinking, be just limping in there one day with a cane and getting one of those scooters and just 
wheeling around there because you, you get the two things. Number one, you, you can get it allows you to be really lazy. Okay. The practice at Costco, though. Yeah. Uh, it, it, little, no, no, wait a minute. Let me spin. finish. Let me finish. It also gives you the opportunity, as it does many of these people who are riding them, to be really mean assholes. Yeah. You know, because they're always like, I'm, I'm in a, tr I'm in a scooter and I'm fat and I can't walk and I, <laughs> you know, I, I get out of my way. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you'd be surprised how many people slam the door on you when you're in those things. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they don't give a shit. They slam? Oh, as you're, as you're trying to go through a door, yeah, they... Yeah, they, they don't give a shit. They walk right through and bam, the door right on your foot. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, you mean... Oh, the door. When, oh, you mean yeah, who? when, who, you're, the guy, when the, you're in the scooter, they oh, don't give a shit. Oh, when you're in the scooter. Now, yeah. now Tom, you work with people uh, that... Uh, I don't know, do they have disabilities or are they just old? Oh, both. Both. Uh, Being uh, old is a disability. Yeah, well, uh, do you find that, uh, do you work with a number of different people or just the same people all the time? Same people. I uh, have about four, four different people I, I, uh, I uh, work for on a weekly basis. What do you call that, uh, the, what you do? I, in home care. Home care, yeah. yeah. In home care. Yeah. yeah. So I work uh on the other side of town, uh, south of uh, UC campus, there's a what's called the uh, Clark Kerr campus. Right. Oh, I've seen there's that. That's, that's, isn't that yeah. on the, the hill? It's right at the foot of the hill. Yeah. It's, where the, uh, uh, it's called Redwood Gardens, and it's where the California School for the Deaf and Blind used to be. Right. I always take that road line. to get down to Berkeley uh, huh. from 13. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Derby Street. Yeah. So, yeah, so I do different things, um, housework. Uh, one, one woman who's blind, I, I, I shop for her. Mm -hmm. I did today. So I go to the supermarket. Uh, she gives me, a, she emails me her list that she wants me to buy. I buy the stuff. I put them on my bicycle, and I ride up the hill and deliver. You know, I I can't help but think of, and, and you'll probably get pissed off at me. I, I had a customer that was blind, and he was very concerned over the color of the carpet. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I said to the salesperson, I said, just give him black carpet. He won't know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know who who did it, but do you ever see how they used to dress Stevie Wonder? Uh yeah. I thought they used to dress them up pretty nice. No, actually, for a while there, they were doing the whole dashiki thing, and he really, they didn't get good dash dashikis. They got terrible dashikis. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, uh, you know, I, I got to know Stevie Wonder in the early years. Mm -hmm. And um, one night I'm at a party uh, that somebody was holding, and Stevie shows up. And uh, I wait a little while, but he's been there for a while. And then I sidle up to him and I said, Stevie? He says, yeah. I said, it's Alex, Alex Bennett. He goes, oh, Alex, how are you? He says, well, I'd be better. But, you know, you walk in this place and you don't even say hello. You know, you don't even recognize me. It's like I wasn't here. And he got the biggest kick out of that. <laughs> he loved it. He used to call me up at 3 o'clock in the morning because I was doing my show overnight. I say, Alex, Stevie, yeah. Listen, I'm taking the car out for a drive. Would you like to come with me? <laughs> <laughs> and he did do that, by the way. Yeah. He would get people to take him to an empty parking lot. And, no get, and he would get behind the wheel of a car <laughs> and drive it around the parking lot. Yeah. So he, but anyway. Why not? Yeah. Maybe you should take him out to Burning Man. Yeah, I, I did ask him a question once. <laughs> I asked him a question once, and I, it's one of my, this was not on the air. Uh, I, I said, Stevie? He says, yeah. I said, I have a, this, just don't, don't feel that I'm being rude here by asking this question, but when you go to the bathroom and then you wipe your ass, how do you know when you're finished wiping it? Is a bidet. Huh? Does he have a bidet? No, he actually told me, he said, you can tell by the resistance. The feel. Yeah, the feel. He says you get used to the resistance of the paper. I, said, I always wondered that, how people who were blind knew when they were finished wiping. 
You asked yeah. somebody else um, that same question. He said the friction. Yeah, yeah. Who who yeah. who was that that I asked? I'm trying to remember. I can't think I, of many blind people. On, on Probably Ray Charles. <laughs> well, you well, had a few people on the show. Caller. It was a record caller. He used to, he used to oh, identify himself as oh, blind. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I do remember asking somebody that. That's probably why I'm not serious anymore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that and a okay, couple so other I reasons. Bring that up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, okay. Think nothing of it. Uh, they don't. Uh, I'm looking this boy. All of a sudden, the air conditioning is not working well in here. It was working well all day long, and then all of a sudden, it's like, I don't know. Maybe it's getting humid. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's. Um, since nobody else is calling, and we, we, it's a nice crowd here. Um, but I dare dare I mention uh, Donald's vacation. <laughs> you vacation mean, yeah. with friends uh, yeah. <laughs> he got them to pony up 80 billion dollars more in defense 80 billion you know something Phil you're completely wrong I, I heard it today no, on CBS it, and no News. no you no he didn't get them to do anything they're going to do what they're always they always have done and have always said they were going to do they were going to get uh, something like 2% of their GDP uh, right. to for defense by 2024. Well, he said that's no good. No, also, who, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who, he is an asshole, and he's an idiot, and I'm going to tell you why. Somebody oh. mentioned that to this today, okay, that he thinks this is a fucking country club where when you don't pay your dues, you're out. Well, He said, no, wait a minute, let me finish. Let me finish what I'm saying. What I'm saying, that is not what this is all about. You know, they, they are finding ways of paying, paying the piper for what they're doing, but they're, so all com they're all coming up with the money, and the United States is not on the hook for anything, so and he's selling you and, your, and his minions and the brain-dead human beings that follow him. They, he's giving them a bunch of bullshit about what this is all about. A bunch of bullshit and try and talk over me, but the thing is... I can turn you down. I can just make yeah, you disappear. Yeah. <laughs> There's only five of the 29 that are meeting their two, their obligation. And this, and this there is no... You've got no, it, Phil. Phil, Phil, there is no obligation. Again, you're thinking of it like it's a country club. There is not an obligation. None of them have an obligation. They are trying to come well, up with and ways to help and put into the pot. It, it is a, it is a uh, unified so, so. effort, okay? But, it, but it's not, see. you're playing it like it's a country club, and it's not. It's not a country club, but, if, you know, you you got to pay to play. If you're going to belong to that organization. No, 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 that's it, not the rule. That's Germany not the rule. Germany can afford it more than By the way, did you else, see. Did, and they're one of the biggest centers. Did you see Pompeo, and did you see Kelly, and did you see our... Uh, our um, uh, uh, Secretary of Defense, and how they were looking at Donald Trump at this lunch. Why? Because Donald Trump is doing what should have been done years ago. He has, no, what, alienate everybody in existence? Make them pay. Tom wants to say something. I don't want to keep talking over him. Okay. Well, that's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> you know. hey. uh, I think it was best put by someone I heard today that said, it's an alliance, it's not a protection racket. Exactly. Exactly. And, and that's, and that's what we're, we're we're that's what we're dealing here. His mindset is totally into into something that has nothing to do with reality. On top of that, his man's mansplaining of uh, to Angela Merkel. I mean, she just let him have it. Says, "Hey, I grew up in in in, in uh, so under Soviet communism, and you're going to tell me." what it's like now, what he has a problem with is that they're sending euros to russia because of the pipeline that russia is putting into germany for natural gas and uh i guess he feels that she should be buying this from uh from allies and uh and not russia what allies norway they're, they're, they're much of their of their uh, uh natural gas and oil is coming from norway well, this why is Russia putting a pipeline into Germany? Well, I mean, you know, it, it, it's it's 
you know, it, it's not that, 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 that just because they're putting a pipeline that, as Trump says, they're totally owned by Russia. I mean, that's absurd. I mean, basically, you know, I'll just finish this. Yeah. I'll just finish my point. And that is that it looks like what what uh, what Trump is trying to do is really destroy destroy NATO. And all the evidence is pointing out that he's out he's out to break up NATO. And that's what Putin wants. He's doing exactly what Putin wants him to do. Mm. And I rest my case. No, good point. Very good point, Tom. I don't. Agree. I you, you, of course, you don't agree. <laughs> yeah. Because he's in the cult of Trump. Huh? You know, he's in the cult of Trump. Yeah. 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 You know, you may not um, like to hear it, but it's true. Um, Trump. Trump. <laughs> Must love Trump. <laughs> Trump, my man, he good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. All right. Uh, what else went on today? Wait a minute. We're not through with this. Oh. I mean, I, I, thought, all, all, I, I all, thought I, you know, all that, I'm saying that, is it's, you know, it's, it's not, you know, he's, he, he, he went into the whole thing all wrong. To begin with, why is he out to alienate our friends and to make friends with dictators? I can't figure that one out to save my soul. Well, I think it's a bargaining. Uh, a oh, oh, really? Do you know something? We are about ready, Phil, and you're going to feel it in your pocketbook to see the worst disaster when it comes to a trade war you've ever seen. Trump says trade wars are good. Wait till he finds out. Wait we're till his hat away. is handed to him. We're two months away from this new big round of uh, tariffs going into uh, going into uh, effect, and I don't think that the tariffs will ever go into effect. What he wants is everybody to drop their tariffs. If you're going to have a tariff on us, then we'll have a tariff Yeah, but all it's you. managed to do is to have them create tariffs on us. There, I saw people, you know, all people, let me let me tell you people it's affecting. I saw some cranberry own growers today yeah. who were absolutely livid about what was going on, and they were all Trump people. And they mm -hmm. just said, he has ruined our lives here. He said, they said, do you realize that 25% of all the output of cranberries in the United States goes to China? And now 25% is not going to go to China. They're going to get their cranberries somewhere else. It'll go somewhere else. They'll sell it to Brazil. And no, Brazil's no. They China. were saying they don't have anywhere else to sell it. If they're, if they're buying that much. They the were, well, listen, how dare you sit there and, and try and make these excuses when these people are trying to wonder how they're going to feed their kids this year. You know, you're 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 preaching doom and gloom, and it's never going to happen. I'm not preaching doom and gloom. I'm just simply repeating what these cranberry growers were saying. You know, their that's their cranberries haven't been tariffed yet. They haven't lost anything. No, no, and no, no, no. You don't get what's happening. China is not going to buy American cranberries. No, but they're going to buy it from Brazil, and Brazil buy it from us. Oh, Jesus, you know, you live in this dream world that you make up. Prove to me that's going to happen. Tell me how that's going to happen. It's an example of the kinds of things that will happen to get around the tariffs. We are going to be in such financial distress, this country, within the next two years as a result of all these tariffs. How many here agree with me? Say... Mm -hmm. So you're the asshole in the group. No, I'm just the only one that knows the truth. <laughs> oh, God. Jeff, what do you think? Oh. Jeff? Jeff joined us. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, Jeff. I'm in uh, Miami today. Really? Yeah. I'm with my uh, friends from Argentina. Mm. And I was going to ask them if they buy cranberries. Crabs. <laughs> Crabs in <laughs> Argentina or not. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Maria, uh, yeah, I can never pronounce her last name the way you do. Bartolomo. Bartolomo. She, she was the one that came up with the theory uh, about uh, you know how the uh, merchandise would go to a different country or the commodity would go to a different country and then get uh, uh, traded around. And uh, you know that's that was her take on it. Well, isn't it kind of stupid that it has to go that way? How do we uh, how do we come out making a profit on that? 
Oh, well, you're still selling the product. The problem is... is why, that, uh, but why don't they just sell direct to China? Do you think it's fair that China or other countries put tariffs on us, but we're not allowed to put a tariff on them? You don't think you no, don't think that's I, I, we've, we've always had tariffs on other countries. We've always not had tariffs. China's had on us. They, they haven't had as extreme tariffs as these, and these uh, uh, tariffs are more extreme than their tariffs against well, us. What Trump wants is free trade, yep. and he's saying, "Hey, if you're going to put a tariff on us, we'll put a tariff on you." Or you know something? You you tariffs. act like Donald Trump knows what the fuck he's doing when it comes I to economics. Really, he doesn't I know. He doesn't know shit. Yeah, Wart, I, I Wharton should take his degree back. Uh, okay. Uh, now, I think he's doing a great job. And he's finally standing up for America. He's actually looking to make America first. And, you know, and these other people, I mean, we're competing with them. And if you just lay over and let them walk all over you, they'll take Why, advantage. What is this America system. first bullshit? Who it's gives that a, bullshit? No, the no, was no, no. We never we, had that. No, America first. I didn't know we were second or third. I thought we were just working with the rest of the world, to try and well, exist. Not, the rest of the world takes advantage of us. Really, of, of really. Oh, give me an example of how I have been taken advantage of by the rest of the world. Well, you don't go outside, so I don't know how you could have been. I go it. outside every day now. I go down to the uh, fitness place and I pedal on my bike going nowhere. Huh? And I then uh, sometimes do other things, like I went down to town today to get ravioli. Yeah. So you know. you're 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 buying Italian stuff instead of buying American. <laughs> Kool Aid. Well, mm, well, American you're, Italian. You're muted, so, Jeff. Uh, yeah. What? Well, what? Well, who's the guy I'm trying to think of that was the uh, the uh, oh, the Batali? Mario Batali. Mario Batali. This. I. I imagine he's still probably a partner in this outfit. Yeah. Even. Didn't he have a problem? And oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. And they took they took all his sauces too. off the shelves in the store he owns. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Re replaced them with uh, Lydia Bastianich. Uh, Somebody Sausage. else just uh, got accused of the Me Too thing uh, 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 yesterday. Uh, who was it? It was um, somebody that you wouldn't think uh, would be accused, and they, he totally denied it. Uh, do you remember? Uh, no. No. Uh, it, 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 it's getting to be old stories now. Whenever it's one of those things come up, you go, oh, okay. You know. Uh, the first ones out were the ones that got hurt the most by it, and the rest are getting to skate. I mean... You know, I remember there was this uh, whole thing about uh, Ryan, Ryan Seacrest, right? Yeah. You know, and that, that kind of disappeared fast. You know, the, the more recent ones have a tendency to disappear. Um, yeah. But did you hear this story? This is a wonderful story. You, you guys are going to love this story. Maybe Phil isn't, but you will. <laughs> did you hear about Sarah Palin? Yes. Yes, getting... Uh, well, let, uh, don't, don't, don't. Let me tell the story to the audience. Uh, don't let me... Don't ruin it for me. Yeah. She revealed today she was duped into doing an interview for the new Sasha Baron Cohen Showtime series, Who is America? Palin said that Cohen pretended to be a wounded veteran in a wheelchair for the interview <laughs> and says she was duped into the sit-down. The UK publication, The Daily Mail, reports adding... After she walked out of the interview, Palin said the network purposely dropped her off at the wrong airport, port, knowing that she couldn't get a flight. <laughs> <laughs> the incident reportedly took place in November. Now Palin wants Showtime and its parent company, CBS, along with Cohn, to donate profits to a veterans group. That's Palin nice. is quoted saying, this legit opportunity to honor American vets and contribute to the legit Showtime historical documentary was requested of me via a speaker's bureau, she adds. For my interview, my daughter and I were asked to travel across the country where Cohn, I presume, had heavily disguised himself as a disabled U.S. veteran in a fake wheelchair and all. I don't think it would be a fake wheelchair. I think it's either a wheelchair or it isn't a wheelchair. Right. Out of res you, respect for what I led to believe would be a thoughtful discussion with someone who had served in uniform, I sat through a long interview full of Hollywoodisms, disrespect, and sarcasm, but finally had enough and literally physically removed my mic and walked out. 
Much to Cone's chagrin, he probably loved every single <laughs> fucking minute of it. I mean, <laughs> he, I'm sure he wouldn't have been happy if that didn't happen. <laughs> Palin reportedly was with her teenage daughter, Piper, who may have missed school because of the airport incident. <laughs> she also informed Cone that Piper thinks he's a piece of shit. <laughs> so, that's, uh, that's Sarah Palin's adventures with Sasha Baron Cohen. Uh, other people have been duped by him. Oh, uh, I remember. You know, he was playing that Ali G. Uh, I don't. I, he had he had duped some pretty famous people. I can't remember exactly. No, no, which he, one. But anyway, he, also, he did Borat and he did Ali G. Uh, yeah. And he, uh, but he, um, uh, when he did uh, the best thing he ever did with Borat for my money was he went into a country bar down in the south, down in the deep south. <laughs> And yeah. they say we we have a country art, new country artist, and he's from uh, he's from wherever they, Bay, something the country he was from, and yeah. uh, he gets up and he goes here's his song is very popular in my country now, and uh, he starts singing throw the throw the Jew down the well, <laughs> so we all can be free, <laughs> and he gets the crowd to sing with him throw the Jew down the well. <laughs> And he's Jewish. Yeah. So yes. my country will be free. Not just Jewish. He's Orthodox Jew. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it, funny, funny, funny stuff. I mean, gutsy stuff. Yeah. In that first movie he did, it just, you know, it just, it, it, the lengths he will go to in order to be funny is, is amazing. You know, he, his commitment to it. Mm -hmm. So here, you know, you've got uh, Sarah Palin, who probably, see, some people would just go, I've been duped, ha, ha, ha. But, you know, these people take themselves too fucking seriously. And that's why they get duped. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, so Perfect I, was target. I was happy to see that happen to Sarah Palin, you know. Well, I hope you do donate the money to a uh, veterans organization. Well, why would I? I'm a veteran. I donate it to myself. <laughs> well, I don't think uh, uh, Sasha Cohn is a veteran. Huh? Uh, I, I well, I, you know, we don't uh, know. You know, they interviewed her under false false pretenses. I I mean, yes, she was duped. Yes, if you have a sense of humor, but you know what? Uh, Listen, you go to Fox, you're being interviewed yep. under false pretenses. They pretend to be a news organization. Yeah, <laughs> fake news. Yes, Fox is fake news. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. You can't go. No, no, ba no backsies. No backsies. <laughs> this uh, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen thing, it, it's not Fox. It was uh, something else that he's it's Showtime. Doing. Show, uh, okay. Uh, for a special. Right. Which is CBS. And, yeah, and that's not, uh, that's not Fox. Uh, so it's just more CBS fake news. <laughs> It goes in there with a, a bunch of news people and uh, under false pretenses. Phil, what am I going to do about you? You know, I like you, Phil, but I <laughs> hate you. I just hate you. I well, find hey, you utterly, what, uh, utterly, irretrievably oh, okay, disgusting. Okay, I tell you what. Why don't, why, don't, why don't everybody here just nod their head and say, Alex, you, you're so right. Everything you say, dittos, Alex, you know. Uh, uh, mega dittos, uh, if if that's uh, one you could use, uh, it might be copyrighted. Uh, no, isn't it better to have somebody to argue with, even if I have a heart condition? Oh, are you are you pulling that one? Hey, it's the Jew card. Hey, listen, uh, I uh, so I'll pull mine. Oh my God, I'm a veteran. Uh, yeah. The horrors, the horrors of my service in the. Well, where were you, Alex? Well, I served my country in Hollywood. Well, that, that's hard. Uh, well, no, you never heard of enemy planes getting past Santa Monica Boulevard, did you? I did my job. I, I think they uh, that they had submarines and other incursions from the Japanese getting onto the West Coast during uh, your stay. It, 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 no, who knows? Anyway, but uh, no, World no. War Two, and uh, you were there in Vietnam, so yeah, I, I, I was. Um, uh, say something, but I. I, I I'm technically, know. I'm technically a Vietnam vet. I mean. I don't Did say this. I say this jokingly because if I don't want to say it seriously, because there are people who served there and came back traumatic. 
Yeah. I, w I was in Hollywood at the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service, and the Vietnam War broke out while I was in service. So, therefore, I am technically a Vietnam vet. And you went there? No. You you no I went, went to I, Well, my voice was heard there. All right. So you didn't get... Uh, what is it in the Navy they give you when you have all of those... Uh, um, uh, Battle uh, ribbons? Colored... Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, it's called pretty little ribbons on your chest. Yeah. Did you get one? Mean. No, I didn't get one of those. No. Oh, okay. I had guys who I was mustered out with who got some for being in the Gulf of Tonkin uh, during the uh, Gulf of Tonkin incident in which they informed me that nothing went on out there, but they came back and they gave them all these fucking ribbons. I was in the Gulf of Mexico. Does that count? Yeah, well, you didn't even serve, you pussy. No, no, no. I was scuba diving. I was... Tom wanted to say something. <laughs> I don't yes, wanna... Tom. doesn't matter anymore. No, go <laughs> ahead, go ahead, Tom. Go ahead. It doesn't matter Bring anymore. some sense to all of this. No, there's no, there's no sense. No, I was going to say, yeah, you could say you were a Vietnam era veteran even though you weren't in Vietnam. Oh, right, right. You were a veteran from that. Well, I don't, I don't like to say any of it, to be honest with you, except as a joke, because uh, there are people who served over there and came back, uh, if they lived, if they survived, they came back mentally distressed for the rest of their lives with a mark on them that they'll never be able to wash off. Uh, and so I don't want to say that I'm, I, you know, that I served my country. No, I, I was forced to serve my country. It was either go into the Navy or the Army was going to draft me. Mm -hmm. So you're okay with Sasha Baron Cohen ripping off veterans? Absolutely. Right? As one veteran to a fake veteran, I'm very happy he did what he did. Hey, look, you know, you have people like Donald Trump who keep saying how much we honor the service of the, you know, and he talks about the troops and the blah, blah, blah. This is a guy who used a bone spur to keep himself out of the military. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, uh, a lot of people did that. Well, the, yeah, but you don't then turn around and act like you're some kind of really, you know, with a guy about people serving and thank you for your thank you for yeah. your service. Well, not necessarily because he's the commander in chief of the armed forces and he's there and he needs to support uh, the people that fight. Do you for know how laughable that is that he's the commander of the armed forces? Well, uh, his he was elect duly elected, and uh, I that's think we his should. I think we should take that away from every president is being the commander of the armed forces. He yeah. should app maybe appoint the commander of the armed forces, but he shouldn't be the commander of the armed forces because what does Donald Trump know about w about war and about military? You know, and all of that. It was at a, mili it was a military academy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, Tom. No, the point is, you know, I, it's a good idea to, to have the president be the, the what's called the commander in chief. The, the, the military is therefore under civilian rule instead of under military rule. Well, couldn't we do so that in some other way? It's sort of like a check and balance on, yeah. on the power of the military. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, see. Uh, somebody says, uh, re, re, Renee Collins says, down, Alex. We listen. Uh, we listen. You uh, let Kevin speak. What about Kevin's heel? Well, he's not a heel. He's a nice guy. Well, uh, uh, that, uh, that's from <laughs> that's, <be. laughs> that's from Renee. He, she wants to know about your heel. That was a long time ago. See? I think that was back in the waiting room day. That was back in the waiting room day? Or back in the waiting room time of the show. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, uh, didn't you say you were going to have some, like, uh, rods are put in there and some stuff? Whatever. Yeah, but that's, that's, why, I got my, uh, that's why I got my thing on there. By the way, Jeff, doesn't, doesn't Phil look healthier than he looked before the stint? <clears throat> oh, turn on your... Turn on your... Yeah. Turn on your... Yeah, you did. Wait a minute. You did. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. How's that? There you go. Yeah. yeah. Phil, I'm so happy that your, your little valves and, and vessels are pumping. Well, he, but he's got to go back in for another one. one more to go. But, uh, yeah, me too. But uh, you know what? I can see it in your face. 
Thanks. You know, I feel it in my in, in all my joints. Uh, I thought I was getting uh, a terrible case of arthritis throughout my entire body. Every joint hurt. And uh, after they put in the one stint, all that went away. I, I you know, I started looking at, the, you know, maybe I got rheumatoid. Well, ma imagine I, what happens when they roto rooter the rest of you. Oh, God, don't get near me. <laughs> you know, I'll, oh. I'll be a machine. When are they going to put some good stuff in your brain? Please? Yeah, that's all we're wondering. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I got the uh, Republican stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is a special place where they drill in there and uh, well, let me let me let me ask Tom. Let me ask Tom a question. I, I know that Tom, you you for a long time were bothered by Phil. I think that goes without saying. No, I'm just mostly bored by him. Oh, okay, you know, but uh, but know, it seems his, 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 his opinions become so predictable. Yeah, yeah. And I I just sort of tuned out after a while. Yeah, you know, I really don't think it, it really. A lot of times, I I don't think it really enlivens the discussion at all. No, you got to push the button. That's that's how you, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So where where are you going with this? No, well, Alex? I was going to say is, but it seems like you've gotten used to him. Well, I accept it. I I mean, I I think that uh, that uh, Ben Franklin was actually wrong. There are three things that, that are certain in life: death, taxes, and Phil. Yeah. My personal theory on this on this program, I think people should limit themselves to no more than twice a week. Really? Then I'd be sitting here with one person a night. Well, you never know. You, you never know how many you people fell. might be getting on, but they they think that the the oxygen is sucked out of the room by a few people that are dominating discussion. Well, I mean, like right now, if if I did that. Uh, everybody except you would have, well, no, uh, two of the people here would have had their two nights already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the two people I really, you know, I like talking to them. Okay. You well, know, it, yeah. it, it, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Uh, you know, I, I would like to think that, um, uh, you know, that maybe you're right. Maybe if we did that, it would encourage more people to call me. We could try that for a week and see how that works. Well, uh, try it uh, on Friday. I've got my underwater photography thing. It'll be a fill-free Friday. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, enjoy yourselves. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I'm not going to do it. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I, I'm not going to do it on Friday. That's the one night we allow everybody, no matter how many times they've been on during the week, to be on the show. <laughs> So, uh, you know. And I'll be riding my bike across Marin County, so I won't be here Friday night. Oh, okay. So I'll probably be alone. And, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, you never know. Some nights, I mean, like some nights we fill right up, you know. Um, what what night did we, when the, when I had Walter Sabo on, which was kind of interesting. Yeah. Or w w Walter, I'll call him because he uses another name. Uh, um, uh, Sterling calls him. I can't remember the name he uses now. Anyway, um, Jack he, Bishop. <laughs> Jack Bishop. He um, uh, he was on, and we did like fifty minutes. And after that was over, the phones lit up. They just that was absolutely lit up. Interesting. That was an extremely interesting uh, interview, yeah. and uh, it. Um, it, it did create some stimulus, and, and you probably got some people that normally don't call. For instance, uh, my friend Stoney Jackson called once, and then I asked him why he didn't call anymore. And he said, well, I really wanted to talk about music. And I said, well, then why didn't you talk about it? And uh, he just felt it wasn't going that way. Uh, I guess that's, you know, I, I don't know why he wanted to talk yeah, about music. Yeah, uh, people, you know, people should not think that, oh, hey, we're having this discussion tonight, and that's what the topic is. I don't think there's ever a topic on this show. And I think if you look at some shows for the two hours, the number of different subject matter that we hit within those two hours mm -hmm. is completely wide range. And if he wanted to call up and talk about music, hey, we're now talking right. about music. You yeah, know? that's what I told him. Yeah. But uh, for one reason or another, I, I, you know, I, I, I talk to him all the time, so I didn't, you know... I, but I had asked him why he doesn't call, and uh, 
you know, because he was really enthusiastic about calling when he when he first called. And uh, he said, "No, I, I really want to talk about music. I'm not that interested in politics." Well, then and he should have started. It would have been. It, we would have loved it. Yeah, you know. And he's an interesting guy, you know. Uh, matter of fact, uh, he's also a videographer. I sent you that video uh, that he did with that uh, Greg, uh, the Greek, uh, the comedian. Uh, it was uh, they went into a pizza shop in Queens, and they had some hipster. Uh, it was the hipster trying to buy pizza in Queens. Very, very, very funny. Uh, uh, Greg the Greek, and there's another comedian. Uh, he he was in the Bronx Tale. Joe and Ofrio. I guess they they work a, a lot together. Hmm. Uh, and the, they're friends of Stony. Well, now you're boring me. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but you should have watched the video. You know, I don't it was think only I don't think I don't think I did. I'll send it again. No, to don't. You. <laughs> All right, it's extremely funny. Well, you sent me a lot of stuff, and and I, to tell you the truth, I've watched some of it, and it's not very good. Well, you know, because you had a tendency to be to send me a lot of stuff. Well, I'm not I'm not a Tony. <laughs> oh wait a minute, here comes Bree again. I wonder what traffic uh, he's in now. Uh, wait a minute, hold on a second. Add to call. There we go. Let's see. Did he come in? No. I added him to the call. Oh, there he is. Hey, Hello, Bree. Can you hear us, Bree? Bree? Can you hear us, Bree? <laughs> well, we have his picture. That's nice. <laughs> you did? Yeah. But, I just see a circle. Circle with a B. With a BR. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm probably not connected on Skype, and that's why I don't see the uh, picture. You're not you're you're not connected on Skype. What do you I'm mean? with Bree. With with Bree. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, but I, I don't I, have him as a contact. And I think in order to see uh, the actual photo, yeah, uh, you might have to have him as a contact. Bree, are you there? I'm here. There. Where are, where are hey. you now? Are you in? Yeah. Are you in? <laughs> Let me put uh, my headset in. My volume is so darn low. Oh. You know, Alex, it's it's really a pain because when I log in from. Skype is like, oh, we've detected craziness. Uh, enter all your passwords in 20 times. No. Yeah. Well, I, uh, um, uh, outside you had some kind of horrible noise of traffic or whatever, and we could barely hear you. Yeah, well, welcome to Manila. Yeah, your audio levels are perfect now. Okay, great. Well, yeah. perfect by what standard? I guess by Skype by standards. Standard, that's the only one that counts. I see. Okay. <laughs> Because you have that big board there. That, uh, today I was thinking, you know, you're going to send me that board you said. And, yeah. I, and I'm thinking about where the fuck will I put that thing? Put it in the other one. In, yeah, in, I in might the, be able to fit it in the other one, but I, it's a huge. That's I, not that big. It's maybe 16, 18 inches square. I, I think it's, tw if you check it out, it's 24 inches by 24 inches. No, uh, uh, you've been telling your wife this is six inches for so long, you got no... No, no, no connection with reality. But that is six inches. <laughs> yes, okay. I'll, I'll find oh, oh, there we go. There's yeah, Bree yeah. in Manila, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, the thriller. Yeah. Mm. See, this is what we this is what we love about about Skype is that we get people sometimes from different places, and and you know I was I was talking to um, uh, Durst yesterday. About the fact right. that when I was a kid, there was a TV show. It was a big TV show, and they first put in the coaxial cable across the United States. And they, it was the first show where they had a camera in New York and a camera at the Golden Gate Bridge. And then they yeah. spanned both coasts in split screen. Blurry, yeah. but split screen. And I was in awe of that. Imagine, we can now see both coasts at the same time. What will be next? Well, it's a guy in his bedroom there in Manila mm -hmm. uh, walking around showing us photos or what, what is that? Is this a hotel room, Bree? <laughs> Airbnb. Airbnb. Oh. oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, let me see here. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I guess that's all the stuff that the people who live there have, like the stuff hanging on the yeah. refrigerator. Uh, they still got some stuff there. Yeah. And then... Uh, but I'll tell you, Alex, uh, I've stayed in New York, so I'm used to, you know, cockroaches to a certain degree. But when I first came in here, there were just a ton of them. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And so 
I, I got some spray. I got some natural sprays, and then I kill. I just started killing them, and after a day, they. I don't see any. You know, you know the you, you know, know the best thing to kill cockroaches. What living in New York back when I first moved here, you became an expert on killing cockroaches. And, yes. And yeah. Uh, there was a thing. Uh, um, I can't remember the name of it, but it had a, scu a skull and crossbones on it, and it for, was for killing roaches. Uh, and I it, had something it, for it, the it, store to kill roaches, and it's not poisonous. It's, it's a well, powder. It, well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Yeah. Now, in this case, I'll bet you it, that's uh, that's what that's it was it. was it wasn't a problem. No, it wasn't a problem physically because it had a natural ingredient that killed yeah. roaches called pyrethrin. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Uh, do, do you have pie? Look at the ingredients there. Um, it's a messy Bessie. Yeah, but look at the ingredients, uh, Brie. Uh, and does it say anywhere like pyrethrin? Oh, here we go. Uh, let's see here. Oh, there. It's well, not the, such a terrible ingredient. It, 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 I don't think it will hurt you. Purified, uh, purified uh, something. Uh, alcohol. Sugar. Sugar cane alcohol. Sugar you really? get a, you just get a drunk and they'll kill a fruit. Is that all natural? natural. Or oil. All natural. But anyway, what happened was, yep, that's that tea tree oil. I went, I went into the kitchen one day, and I, that's where the roaches like to hang out. It was like their tango palace, and uh, they, yeah, uh, uh, the kitchen. It liked to hang I, out I the can kitchen. Show you and right I now, took a box of cereal that I hadn't used in about a couple of weeks and put it down and I saw a roach come climbing out of it. So I figured, well, maybe there's some roaches in there. So I took the pyrethrin, right, the spray, and I, um, I sprayed it into the box of cereal. Bad idea. This box of cereal started to move and bounce across <laughs> the counter. <laughs> And the roaches were coming out just over the sides of this thing. It was just, it was amazing. Ugh. But it, I killed them all. I was, I felt like the, I felt like the Eichmann of roaches. It's, yes, yes. That, that's exact. Alex, that's what I feel like. Yeah, you oh, love God. killing roaches. <clears throat> Nothing better than it's seeing a, a roach die slowly. It's a new Kellogg cereal called Captain Roach. The Captain Roach. Yes, uh, t uh, Tom. <laughs> Yeah, I remember your story. I think that the, the product you, you were you were talking about was called La Bamba. La Bamba, yes. Uh, and I figured, and I basically figured. The way you told yeah. the story was you're trying to figure out who would know how to kill kill roaches, and he says, obviously the Puerto Ricans. And so you went to a Puerto <laughs> Rican store and said, what do you got that kills roaches? And they they sold you this stuff called La Bamba. La Bamba. It was called La Bamba, and I kept buying. <laughs> I had like cans of La Bamba around the house. And it really did. I mean, it it killed those roaches. It was amazing. The, and, but it, the the thing was, white people don't like to use La Bamba, and I'll tell you why. Because with Raid, you kill them or you put it somewhere, and they go somewhere off and they die. With La Bamba, you just set it off like in the kitchen, and then you leave. And when you come back, all the roaches are all over the place, dying and spinning on their backs and having little X's <laughs> on their eyes, you know. It, I spray every three months at the store, and after we spray with that pyrethra uh, that you mix with water and you put it in a, a in a spray thing, mm -hmm. uh, it's like the next morning it's a roach holocaust. Yes, yeah, everywhere. yeah. <laughs> and, and it made me feel on their back, half dead. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what's this called? Uh, it's uh, well, that was called La Bamba. Uh, uh, and, 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 and I, I don't know if they, they have it there. They, I can probably find it yeah. here in New York. But um, uh, it was, uh, it, it really, they, they, they were dying just agonizingly, very slowly, spinning around, you know, and all that. And I was just loving every moment of, die, you little bastards, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Brings out the Democrat in you. Hey, uh, 16 and a half wide, 17 deep. 16, 17 deep? Yeah. Oh, well, it's, that's not bad. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me see uh, here. What, what, what is 16? Um, 16 in length, you say? It's 16 in width. Width. And how about in length? 17. 17 in length. Okay. Actually, I could maybe fit it here. If I just move the screen back a little so bit. So you play with it. 
<clears throat> I might be, well, I I might, be might be able to. Well, I'm not going to throw it away. You know. Uh, give it away, you know. But, uh, yeah. So, I, you know, but I, 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 I love La Bamba. That was my, that was my... And, and it was all the uh, it was, all the instructions were in Spanish, so I I just figure all it says is spray, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and uh, it it you know, but we we had a really a bad roach infestation because what happens is, I'm ne- we've seen one roach in this apartment in the whole time we've been here, and somebody comes in every three months and sprays. Okay. They but go the, next door. Well, the thing is though. A lot of times in the old days in New York, if somebody moved out downstairs, they moved upstairs. You know, you, you got an invasion yeah. because it's, they <clears> left. This is, this is what's happened. Yeah, yeah. You and, know, Alex, what's funny is yeah. when I came in here, mm-hmm. when I came in here, uh, there were just so many, like, all over. And wait, so wait, you're paying for this is, is, wait, You're paying for this as a B&B? How much is this Airbnb? Airbnb. How much, how, how, Bree? How much is this B&B? Um, this one is about like thirty-five U.S. dollars, but Not- it's a, it's very big. It's very nice. Uh, you know, it's definitely a nice place. And the B&B stands but- for Bugs and Bugs. <laughs> how much well, do they charge you for the pets? Yeah. Well. <laughs> Uh, that's the thing. I told them, and they're giving me one night for free, so they they refunded money since I had to buy the roach spray. But um, the thing is, is I told them it's like, look, you look. It's a city area. It's Manila. Of course, you're going to have some pests. Of course, you will. I mean, it's like being in New York City or Pittsburgh. Uh, but I told her, I said, they have the upper hand here because. No one has stayed here for a couple of weeks. So when I came in and I started killing them, what was funny was in the apartments on the side at night, I could hear kids screaming and then boom, boom, boom. So like they left here and they're going into the other apartments now. I think this was their their hideout. And now they're going in and I can hear the screams and the boom, boom, booms in the other areas. Now, Jeff, uh, you're in Miami. Now, Miami has some of the biggest bugs in the world. Well, they have the palmetto. Right. Yeah, the palmetto bug. Uh, and and the, palm, the palmetto the bugs. Up. No, the palmetto bugs are roaches with wings that fly. Yeah. And they're yeah. big. And they're yeah. big. <laughs> I was sitting in a movie theater in Miami once, and all of a sudden I saw one on the floor, and I went, what the fuck is that? You know? So I put a saddle on them. I rode them out of the theater. You know, I mean, uh, they are uh, just. Am I thinking? Am I right with the palmettos? Uh, what they're called? They're big. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, don't I thought they palmettos were moving the sofa around in my apartment when I lived in Miami. You know, yeah. I come home, the sofa is six inches over. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, what? A, that's really, you know, really bad. I mean, hell, you. you, you you would hope that if you got a place for a vacation, they would make sure that there weren't, if there were roaches in the place, that they weren't there when you got there. You really can't. Uh, roaches there, yeah. I'm gone. Huh? You really can't do anything about it. You know, it, you spray. It's a temporary thing. Uh, they they just keep coming. You well, know? no. The, uh, yeah. uh, 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 for instance, this is a very old apartment house. Okay, <laughs> uh, and I'm sure. If they didn't do whatever they do, that there would be mice and rats and and bugs and everything here. And I haven't. I saw one mouse in the whole time that we've been here, uh, and one one roach in the whole time we've been here. And that's oh, that's, that's like eight years we've been here. You know. Yeah. Well, it, it, you're on the eighth floor. It's tough to, for them to come up the stairs, and they can't reach the button. I'm on the seventh elevator. Well, I told you the time a squirrel wound up in here. Yeah. Uh, he had wound. He had climbed Every the build. They button. they can climb buildings. Yeah, death defying. And I'm sitting there in the kitchen, and I'm looking in the dining room, and there's a fucking squirrel staring at me. You don't you don't have a lot of light, bro. Yeah, you can't see, see the uh, labels. Uh, and and this guy. You know, it's funny. I've got light. It's daylight here. And, and it's he, strange. He was also he was also uh, brazen because I went 
get out of here. And I ran over to him, and he just stood there and looked at me like, what the fuck are you thinking? And then finally he went to the window, and he kind of looked back, gave me the little squirrel finger, and then jumped out, and I figured maybe he committed suicide. Two days later, there's a news, on, a news story on the news, uh, on the local news. The CVS on the street corner down here had a squirrel running, running in. loose in it, and I went, yeah. that's him. It's the same one because he's brazen, you know. So he was blaming Boris and Natasha. Uh, yes, right, right. Uh, how come you don't? Yeah, now we can see you. Now there's light. Yeah, it's weird. This is how it's, yeah. I think the daylight was coming in and somehow messing with the camera. I got to go right to the daylight. Yeah. yeah. So how many pounds do you think I'm going to gain from the, all the ravioli I ate today? I decided to finally treat myself. I guess it's uh, what happened. Well, here's what I can't figure out. Does that mean that I ate like, let's say I ate 800 carbohydrates? Let's be ridiculous here for a moment. When midnight comes, does all that dissipate? I mean, is, is it, and if tomorrow I'm back on the diet, uh, it, it doesn't count? It's only the one it day? It depends if you sleep on your back or your side. You know, if you sleep on your side, it'll dissipate to the side. You know, uh, if you sleep I, I see. Back. Okay. <laughs> no, I just wonder if there's an expiration date on diets. Like if you ha only can do so many calories a day, and let's say you do 800 calories and you can only do 500. Uh, does, does it expire at midnight? Uh, you know, it depends on your metabolism. Uh, for instance, when I uh, have Wait something with sugar in Hold on a second. What are you holding up there, Bree? A gum tree or something. What is oh, that? that's for when I when I get bit by the mosquitoes. Boy, this is a wonderful vacation, vacation you're on. Virgin coconut cake. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. I, I mean, you just got to take the precautions. I mean, you go to the beach, you take sunscreen. You come to Manila, you have uh, mosquito spray, roach spray, and uh, tea tree cream. <laughs> and penicillin. Uh, yes, <laughs> Phil, you wanted to finish what you were saying. When, when I eat something as a diabetic... Uh, if it's got too many carbs, uh, what will happen is it'll take, uh, I can measure my blood and it'll take uh, sometimes a day for me to get back to a normal level. So it really depends on your metabolism and what you're dealing with. I mean, yeah. uh, Kevin has diabetes, right? And, uh, but you control it with insulin, right? Who mean no? Uh, oh, I thought you did. Uh, no. See, I don't, I don't see wild spikes. I don't see any changes at all when I take my... That's just weird. I don't know that I have true diabetes. Uh, well, maybe you yeah, don't. I don't think I have true. Maybe you have, maybe you have fake diabetes. Well, because they've always argued about it between my, my uh, antibiotic toxicity and my diabetes. They've never really figured it out. Really? Yeah. yeah. I don't have diabetes. That's the one thing I found out about, you know. Because I, everybody said every time I told them I had numb feet, they went, "Oh, it's got to be diabetes." And no, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, well, that's they said to me too, but they figured it might have been the antibiotics that I was taking forever. Yeah. Too. What is all that stuff you're showing us here? Gold I'm lot. showing you all the stuff I like. Oh, gold what's that gold crawling gold around gold. inside there? Double <laughs> There's a Goldie box in Concord, and I go there and I yeah, buy Filipino awesome. you know, food. You know. Uh, uh, so these are the kinds of things. Thai style milk tea. Yeah, well, your 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 your, um, your fiance Phil, the, yeah. the long term fiance. Right. Uh, uh, she uh, she's she's from the Philippines, right? Yes, she came to the, when she was sixteen. And uh, and uh, Rob's wife is from the Philippines. Yes, as well. She, she is. Yeah. Yeah. Pop -pop. I wish I could say Marjorie was from the Philippines, but she's not. So, yeah. Hey, listen, uh, we've run out of time. It's just been a nice little gathering here. We we haven't gotten into too much uh, political chazarai, as my people say. The uh, Supreme Court yeah. is being packed as we speak. It, it's being packed, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, much like a uh, anal hooker. Uh, anyway, uh, yes, Phil, thank you so much for being here yep. this evening. And thanks to Bree for calling us from Manila. And uh, say hello to the roaches for us. Uh, and, and Jeff, down in Miami, thank you. Tom, you're a godsend. Anytime I go, help, I need somebody. You're, 
I notice you sign on, and there you are, and I really appreciate it, Tom. You've been a good friend over the years. And uh, Kevin, what can I say? Uh, but uh, who, who can hate a guy that looks like Santa Claus? Anyway, that's it for tonight, everybody. I think you should give a, uh, a big uh, wave goodbye. <laughs> Look, San Miguel flavored beer. Uh, give a big wave goodbye, and uh, we'll see you all hopefully uh, tomorrow. Bye. All right. That's it for our citizen panel for tonight. Let me just hang up rudely on them now so that uh, Jack Bishop, who does the next show called The Intersection, uh, will be here and uh, 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 and, and uh, can use those lines. And then at 1 o'clock this morning, it's Connections tomorrow night at uh, 9.30. It's Damien Chaplin and a little program he likes to call The Exchange at uh, 10 o'clock. I'll be back again, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.